Hey Richard, I got one more bolt holding that cover on. Good deal. All right, this is this is a, a sort of an open session we're going to do on automatic transmission because this is automatic transmission day, and this is a cutaway of a transmission out of like a you know four wheel drive Explorer or whatever, and uh, you know five wheel fifty five E or whatever. I mean you know you got to after a while you get to where you know these nomenclature better than that. Yeah. Uh, we just look and I just want to let you know. Okay. okay. No but, uh, but anyway, what we got up here in the front, okay, what goes what goes on this end of the transmission? What do these bolts go to? Mold. They actually bolt up to the flywheel. Fly wheel. Oh, we have the flywheel. And this green part right here is called the turbine shaft. Right? Okay, so you might notice this inside part of the, uh, the torque converter that is hooked to that turbine shaft does not have a direct connection to this outside part at all. If I took two fans and I put it facing each other and I turned on one fan and let it blow on the other fan, what's the other fan that is blowing I'm going to do? Start turning. So basically think about this turbine as the fan that, that is being blown on. This front part of this is one is the fan that's powered by the engine and it's taking fluid and it's throwing it against this turbine and it's the way that the blades are, it looks like something out of a jet engine. If you and I've got one over there we've got cut apart, I can tell you. And it's gonna start turning that turbine shaft. And you see all these these gears in here? These are planetary gear sets. We'll talk a little bit more about them later. But planetary gear sets are what gives you your different gear ratios in an automatic transmission. And all these clutches and brakes and stuff, you've heard, you've heard somebody talking about bands in an automatic transmission? Bands? I mean, it's like, this is band adjustments. Well, a band is like a brake. It's a strap that's going around this drum, and there's got a little servo hooked to it. And so that whenever the transmission uh, valve body sends a command up there by moving a spool valve or if there's solenoids that do it or whatever, uh, it can bite the outside of these drums and stop some of these members while it's driving others, and that gives you your different gear ratios. And I've got a little, I got some animations that I can't really put on YouTube because they're copyrighted, but I'm going to show you a little bit later on how planetary gear sets work. I've got some really, really good stuff on that. Uh, so these right here, you might notice you've got speed sensors here one, two, three speed sensors. On this particular transmission, the engine controller wants to know how fast various different parts of this are turning. You know, it'll have a turbine shaft sensor, an output shaft sensor, and the sensor, and it's got this one in the middle. And as it's measuring all of that, the, the engine, the engine, the controller, this thing here that he's wiring up, it knows how fast the engine is spinning. It knows what gear the transmission is in, and it knows how fast that output, which goes out through the transfer case to the rear, it knows how fast that's supposed to be turning. So basically, if it compares engine speed and to turbine speed and output shaft speed, you may even get a code when you pull it that'll say incorrect gear ratio obtained for third gear or something like that. And, uh, but anyway, right here is where the electric wires hook to it for that. Now, who knows what this is? Out of number D. Range sensor. Yeah, that would be the range sensor. It also doubles at the backup light switch, and it is the neutral safety switch too. And so it knows what gear your transmission's in. It also knows whether you're in neutral or park. And it also knows if, the, if you're in reverse so it can turn on the backup lights. And those little things right there, that can give you some issues. You might also see these. These are band adjustments right here on those two bands right there. This is the port where you do your, you know, well, some of your fluid checks. There's other ports. you got to make sure when you're doing a fluid check and you're going to, I've got worksheets on that, when you're doing fluid pressure checks that you're doing it at the right port because some of them will have multiple ports and all. And these right here, you see these little things. What in the world happened there? Oh, I know what happened. Okay. Since, since, this is not, it's just, since this is not a PowerPoint, I'm going to have to keep, you know, fooling with it so that we don't lose our picture. Okay. I'm going to go forward to that. Well, that's the pump. Let me, let me finish this up while I'm doing this. And um, that is the pump set up there, and every now and then move that mouse so that this thing didn't go dark on me. I should have done this a different way, but that's okay. I can make it happen. Uh, but this particular part right here is your, is your pump. And you're going to learn more about that too. Now you see this purple part that's in between? This is called the impeller, because it's hooked to the engine. 
and it's going to throw the fluid against the turbine. And that's how you can, you know, whenever you're in driving, you're sitting there with your foot on the brake and you're not going anywhere, you know, you're basically not putting enough pressure against that turbine for it to want to try to pull off. Now, stall speed, you might notice this is a, uh, a one-way clutch. It's got a little thing that you'll see, you'll learn more about that later too. But this is a stator. And after the fluid has been thrown in here and it needs to be, you know, circulated around and around to keep this process going, this redirects the fluid where it will uh, give you torque multiplication. And it's also got a one-way clutch. And I guess at a certain speed where everything's kind of spinning together and it's just driving down the road. But once you want, remember, this is the turbine shaft. And you look at an automatic transmission, if you pull the front off of it, you're going to see the turbine shaft sticking out there, and then you'll see a bigger toothed uh, tube that it's coming through. That's part of the pump, and they call that the stator support, and the stator sits on that. Now this will come clear as we get out there and we get our hands on some transmissions, but this starting you out with this right here. Um, but anyway, these are these are drums, the green part is drums, and this, the red part there is a band. And this is an output shaft. You might notice the output shaft and the input shaft are not connected together except through all of these clutches and bands and everything. Okay, what I want you to do now is hit the right arrow on the keyboard. On the keyboard. Right arrow. Right arrow. See, there it is without all that stuff. So now we're going to do a pop test. Yeah. Well, you guys can show me. <laughs> you see how big his eyes got? No, I'm kidding. Go one more. One more. All right, now this right here, you notice this is a transaxle. This is a cutaway of a transaxle. Now you might notice the transaxle has got the differential in it, which is what you'd ordinarily find in the rear end on your front wheel drivers, okay? Uh, and this, these gears right here, these spider gears, enable it to, uh, let me see that, right, that thing right there. One wheel will spin faster while the other one spins slow. Yeah, it enables the wheels to turn at two different uh, speeds when you're going in, around curves. Well, whenever you're just driving down the road, it goes like this, see, and all that. So that's what this is that you're looking at right there. Uh, now, this, see, this right here is the ring gear, and that's the pinion gear. And basically, that, and what is that right there? Who can recognize that and tell me what that is? Huh? That's the pump. That's right. See, now, so what is this? That's the torque converter. Now, you might notice the green is going to be your impeller, and the red is going to be your turbine, and in between here is going to be your stator. See? So that's basically, you've got all that. Now, now, once again, these are called spider gears, remember that. Now, if you might even think about this, if you're ever driving a front wheel drive car, and you have a flat tire on the front, if you put the little donut wheel, have you ever had to drive with a donut on there? If you put the donut on the front on a front wheel drive car, if it's a Honda or a Toyota or something like that, it makes these gears just work really, really, really hard and you can damage the transmission. So what you're supposed to do is put the donut on the end that doesn't have the differential, really. Uh, and they, like little transaxles will have really, you know, um, fragile little spider gears in there if you work them too hard. Now what is that right there? That's a speed sensor. It's an output shaft sensor so that uh, the computer will know how fast these, this is turning. Your CV axles, have you ever read, you ever seen CV axles? You know what I'm talking about? They go out to the wheels, and they've got the boots on them. The CV axles snap into here. All right, and so right here, this right here, you might notice the this turbine shaft going in there. And see all your clutches, how they're in the, these are planetary gears, and all that. That's not too common. There's another speed sensor right there. And I'd say that'd be the turbine speed sensor. And this right here is going to be the output speed sensor. Okay, go to the next slide. Now this is another front wheel, I mean, this is another one, and this actually got the, you know, some CV axles in it. See that how they're snapped in there? It's kind of like a CV joint? Yeah, the CV joints are out here on the, on these ends and all that. And see, they snap into them spider gears. And see, this is a Ford uh, transmission out of like a Taurus or something like that. That's what this is. You might notice this one here is a little different from that other one because it's got a chain. Look where the torque converter is. And the turbine shaft goes back here and you know drives a pump and then you've got your um, this chain and all of the torque that's coming from here is driven by a big old chain it looks like a, like a famine chain uh, and basically goes through all here and see all that's going through the middle of it that's pretty cool stuff right there that's a servo whenever fluid pressure comes in behind that it goes in there and you know does what it needs to do 
Now some of these, you won't always have bands around these drums. Sometimes you'll have uh, clutches that are like stacked, you know, of, of steel and a fiber and steel and a fiber. And the fiber will have teeth on the inside and the, and the steel will have teeth on the outside. And when pressure is applied to those, they'll actually act as a brake and they'll stop stuff. Other ones, while they're spinning, they'll apply and they'll actually act as a driving number. And so there's also things that look similar to this as accumulators that will actually, uh, whenever you fluid fills up a circuit to apply the clutches, it'll squeeze a spring in an accumulator and it softens the application of the clutch. All right, so come on, go on, go on another slide. Now this right here is an interesting little story. Whenever, when I, the first semester that I was here, uh, we rebuilt the transmission in a two, 1991 Nissan hardbody. Uh, because she said we went over a, a railroad track and it just quit pulling. Uh, well, what we found out was that the torque converter was wiped out. The little, you know how that little turbine shaft has got teeth up in the torque converter? That torque converter had wiped the teeth out. I mean, the turbine shaft had wiped the teeth out in the torque converter. And there was all kinds of metal all throughout the transmission. So we just went and tore it down. We put clutches and seals in and all that kind of stuff. But the critical mistake that we made, while we did flush the transmission cooler, you couldn't flush it good enough because as soon as the, you know the two lines that go from the transmission to the radiator? Mm -hmm. You ever seen those? <clears throat> they, the torque converter is where the heat comes from in an automatic transmission. So the torque converter, when it's shearing that fluid, is making all your heat. Uh, whenever the fluid leaves the transmission, it's going from the torque converter to the radiator, losing that heat and it comes back into the pan and it's picked up and it makes the same trip again. Well, what we didn't factor in was the fact that all of these little metal particles, uh, we couldn't wash them out of the radiator good enough and it got some, and there are filters you can get for this but they're really expensive that you put in the line, you know. But anyway, a bunch of metal got in the valve body and it would drive out just fine and then it would stop shifting and we'd have to pull the valve body off and clean it again. And there is a ball that rides, that goes back and forth between those two holes, right? Well, when they were putting the valve body back together, one time they did it too fast, and they put a ball in both of those places. And the first time it shifted to second gear, the wheels locked up. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of crazy stuff like that. But that's why I took a picture of that ball track. If you see one like that, it means there's just one ball there, and it's rolling back and forth. See, the fluid is pushing it from one to the other. When the fluid goes that way, it seals up and whatever. All right, now go get another one. All right, now this right here was one from the op police department. They had a, uh, they kept getting codes on an automatic transmission they were working on over there uh, for problems inside the transmission. They replaced the solenoids and nothing fixed it and all that kind of stuff. And what they found out was this connector that goes through the transmission, side of the transmission, and hooks into all of the, you know, the, feeds all the solenoids in there was burned up right here. And so in order to fix the transmission, they fought with it for a pretty good while. They had to replace this, they had to buy this from Ford and put a new one of those on there. And so that's just something I wanted to show you there. That's a strange transmission problem. Go to the next slide. Now this right here is what you call a one-way clutch. This is, some people will call it a sprag, and a sprag clutch works real similar to this. It does the same job as this, but it's got little things in here that looks like a bow tie. And they, when they rock, they lock it up, you know. These little springs right here, you know, push on these, and they ride, whenever you turn it one way, they ride into the deep ramp, and you'll see them little ramps, every ball, every one of them's got its own little ramp. Whenever you turn, try to turn it the other way, it rolls up there and tightens up, and there's no way it can keep going. All right, go to the next one. Now this right here is a fluid mouth. <laughs> this is something you're going to have to learn how to read, okay? And so... You might notice that whenever, and this is not real, I got some better pictures of this, you know, later on. You see, these are accumulators here, and basically you've got a, uh, the, the, the uh, shift, the one that your shifter is connected to, and let's see, this one here is not a good enough image of that to work out. That's the pump right there, and if you look at the little legend up here, and I'll have a clearer picture of that for us to study later. This right here is the one that's hooked to your shifter. You see, and as it moves, those spool valves direct fluid to these other valves. And as you drive it, the governor on the older transmissions would rechannel the fluid as you picked up speed and cause it to shift into the next gear. If you're loaded and you're going up a hill and you're into it, they have a vacuum modulator right here. It's hooked to the engine, and when you got high engine load, you got low engine vacuum, and that would cause this to hold your gears longer. When you're going up a hill on an automatic transmission, you want it to wait longer before it shifts. That's how it does that. 
Now, most of them got away from that. I think this is a, a 4T65E or something like that, uh, which is like in an Oldsmobile or whatever like that. You see these things, that, these uh, these servos right here, you know, that bite things and, you know, uh, they actually push a little band in behind that kind of stuff. And these accumulators are what I was talking about that basically it fills that up when it's going to, you know, go from one gear to the next and it'll make the application not so hard. Uh, if, the, if the pressure is regulated, especially too in these things, if the pressure goes really high, because sometimes on the electronic transmissions it'll drive the pressure really high when it knows there's a problem to keep you from burning the transmission up and it'll shift really hard and jerk a crick in your neck. And, all right, go to the next one. You see, that's a different gear that we're in there. See the torque converter? There's your torque converter assembly. And this right here is a modulator, and that's the pump. Okay, so that's the three things I was talking about there. And this is the little clutches. They, it's very difficult to make a workable diagram on an automatic transmission without laying it out all over the page like this. So, all right, go to the next one. And yeah, see, I got a little small illustration there that I was making a point of one time. But keep going. Now, right here is a little table that you're going to make right here uh, where basically you're going to check your pressures in each one of these gears and each one of these conditions. Now, wide open throttle is lock the park brake, holding the brake as hard as you can, you put it in reverse, and you slam it all the way to the floor and hold it. Now, it's going to hit stall speed, which is varies. If the stall speed is too low, it means your one-way stator clutch is bad and you got, you know, um, you got to replace the torque converter. Or if the engine's underpowered, the stall speed can be too low. Um, but you're not going to do wide open throttle in park or neutral because there's no point in it. But at the end, when you go to this little table, slow idle, write your pressure down. Fast idle, write your pressure down. Wide open throttle, write your pressure down. And you can look at those pressures and there's a place in the book you can compare that for what they're supposed to be. And that's one of the ways you can tell what's wrong in there. If you've got one particular range that the pressure is not what it's supposed to be, you can go to look at the stuff that's activated in that range, clutches and stuff that are applied. All right, go on now. Now that right there is what a burned up gear looks like out of an automatic transmission. I'm holding it in my hand right there. And these, this right here is a helical cut gear, but you can see it's all burned. And inside all these gears are the little bronze bushings. And when you take these things apart, you need to look at them really, really close if you aim to put them back together where they're going to work. Because if you pull it apart and you miss something, if you're just pulling it apart and putting it back together like a puzzle, and that's basically what a lot of people do, but you've got to look really, really careful at all those parts and see if they fit together for the wore out. I have had people in here that were pretty good that would build a transmission and the only thing they got wrong was they missed a part that was worn out and it made it not do right. They didn't go back into it. All right, do it again. This is what most transmission mechanics use whenever they're building one. They have this picture right here and they have them thing laid out on the bench and they've got all of these. And then they look and they make sure they're not leaving out anything. Each one of these spinning components is going to have a little bearing or a, boot or a little washer in between and all that. These Basically, these are your clutches and steels and all that. So ordinarily, when you do the pizza box overhaul, you're basically going to have a bunch of rubber seals and clutches and all in a box that looks like a pizza box. That's how it comes. Uh, this right here is the valve body part of it. It's a solenoid body on that one there. And there's your pan right here. You know, this right here is uh, one uh, E4 D4 transmissions. All right, and see, you just, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but this is basically a breakdown so you can see how to put it back together. That's not very many parts to remember, is it? You can do that. Yes. All right. Look at him shaking his head over there. All right. Go to the next one. Now this guy right here, the mistake that he made, this was Jerry Littlefield. He was a, one of my very first students I ever taught. Uh, this was his pickup truck. That's the valve body on it. That's the, you know, shift right here. And whenever he was working on it, somehow or another, he pulled the uh, dipstick tube out for some reason. I don't remember why. And some dirt got in the pan. And because dirt got in the pan, that dirt, some of it was fine enough to get past the filter and into the valve body and it wouldn't shift right. And he had to clean that valve body about a dozen times to ever get all that out of it. It's really aggravating if you get dirt in an automatic transmission. That's why if you go to an automatic transmission shop, you see a spotless, clean bench. They ain't nary a speck of nothing anywhere. It looks like a surgical <laughs> operating table is about. So they don't want no dirt in there. Now there's dirt all over the place, but you've got to learn to keep it away from your, your transmission. All right, go ahead. All right, now, this one right here was this paint strainer, like what we did with the, with the radiator on this lady's Nissan, and that's the paint strainer, or it may be from another, maybe from another transmission. We actually left the parts washer on running and letting it push through the uh, transmission cooler 
and it had a paint strainer that it was going through, and it, got all, it washed out a lot of this crud right here. If you ever have one that has wiped out those splines in the torque converter like I'm talking about, the smartest thing you can do is replace the radiator too. You know, even if you're going to put another transmission in it, flush out the lines, put a radiator in it, or put an external transmission cooler on it if the radiator is not acceptable. Because you don't want this trash getting back into your valve body and cost you a bunch of work to ever pull it back apart again. Okay, go. All right, go to the next one. All right, this right here is some of your scan tool stuff right here, and that's not even to do with transmission, so go to the next picture. Uh, now look at this. See this chart right here? This is giving you gear ratios. This right here is telling you what each one of these clutches are doing in various different gears. You see that? Now this is very good. If you've got a particular gear that's not working right, what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, third gear is what's not working right, but all the other gears are, so to speak. So if you've got overdrive third gear, look at the ones that are applied. These are the ones you're going to focus on when you tear it down. So you look at pressures. You also look at your chart to see which ones you want to look at. you got to know where they are when you're tearing it apart. But these charts right here are really handy when you're doing that. All right, go on to the next one because we're almost done here. And here's another one of those clutch and band application charts. Uh, and it does, it does the same thing that you were looking at before. One more. All right, this is what it looks like when you pull the transmission oil pan off and it's all full of crap. Whenever you see this, the cat's on the roof. Now, some people will say if you service the transmission and you've been driving it for 120,000 miles, you've never serviced it, and this can happen. Sometimes that brand new fluid will break varnish and stuff loose inside the transmission and cause valves to stick. And you can cause the problem by servicing a transmission that's been driven a long way without servicing it. Now, but you need to, if, before you service a transmission, if somebody's bringing it into the shop, you need to drive it first. If they say, I want my transmission <coughs> serviced, and, you, and they, a lot of times they won't tell you what's wrong with it, you, you go drive it, and whenever you drive it, if it shifts out like it should, you're supposed to be paying attention and not listening to your radio or whatever. Drive it, boom, boom, boom. If it's not shifting right, you come back and say, do you want us to address this not shifting right thing? Or do you just want it serviced because it's got a problem? Because what they'll do a lot of the times is they'll come and say, service my transmission, then they'll drive and say, now it ain't shifting right, I want you to fix it. <laughs> so you got to be careful with that. You know, basically, but if you see stuff like this in one when you tear it down, uh, that's bad news. And it's telling you that there are issues that's going to happen. You can't just wash that out. Now, if they say, I know it's got problems, I just want to service it and see if I can get a few more miles out of it. You know, some, you know, not every customer is a jerk, but some of them can be in certain. All right, go ahead. And that's where we've started. Okay, anybody got any questions? Did you learn anything? Do you know stuff now you didn't know before? Yeah, I'll, some of these pictures you didn't show us in the office. Yeah. Well, actually, they were in the elective stuff. The elective, not. Yeah, they were in here, and then with the, with questions that were supposed. To, and you're going to run into some of these questions, too, huh? The fans you were talking about some electives. Yeah, yeah, and this and it seems to me like I had this picture here in there too. Yeah, if I remember was. that. And that and it had all that stuff. But anyway, uh, uh, there's a story behind most of them pictures. And, uh, but anyway, that's uh, that closes out our class session for today. But I.